Good morning, everyone. My name is Landon. I'm here with Technical Radio. Today we'll be doing radio shows. Up first is Sonic Ramen. Hope you enjoy. Hey, hey, hey! There's like there's like a couple seats over there. No, I don't want to sit all the way in the front. Well, I mean, all right. How about those in the middle? Yeah, that seems good. Excuse me. me. These kids, they're driving me insane. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Hey, nice hat. (sighs) Yeah, these seats aren't too bad. Mine's all sticky. You're at the movie theater. Of course they're going to be a little sticky. Even a floor. I wasn't expecting the seat to be like this. Well, you could shut up. The movie's about to start. Jeez, what's this guy's problem? It's just a few previews. Most of them are probably going to suck anyways. Shh, come on. I want to see them. Coming this fall. What if I told you you could have it all? What do you mean? Everything. You could have everything and anything. Money, cars, girls, your own little star on Hollywood Boulevard. All you have to do is sign. If you were offered fame and fortune on a golden plate, would you take it? All I have for my characters, Mom! You're as worthless as your father. Fine. Go off and make a fool of yourself in front of everyone in Hollywood. Hello. My name's Ronnie Little, and uh, I'll be auditioning for the role of Constable Yeager. <clears throat> Hello, governor. Hello. Mm-hmm. You got the, you've got a young Pacino in you. You've got the job. Experience the rise of one man. And the award goes to Ronnie Little. Woo! My man. <laughs> I never thought I'd make this far. I just want to say that I proved you wrong, Mom. Your little boy is a star. And a man. I'm a man now. Ronnie, what can we expect from you now that you're an award-winning actor? Well, you know, I have some things in the works. Hey, you better watch that pretty mouth he is. Might not be so pretty soon. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. It's just you and me, Jar Jar. We have to save the princess. Look out for that walker. Matilda, I see myself in your eyes, like a reflection in a pool of water, except I'm drowning in this ocean, into your deep blue. Oh, Ron, I feel like we're more than just two actors working together. We've connected on an emotional level that really can't be explained through words, but must be seen to be understood. Words can truly not describe our love. No, no, you should probably use your words. Inexperience, one man's fall. Oh, yeah. (sighs) Ronnie, do you have anything to say about the reports of your erratic behavior on the set of your new movie? Yeah, there'd be no need for the erratic behavior if food services got the junior mints I requested. Ronnie Little doesn't work without the many morsels of chocolate. Oh, Ronnie, I don't even know you anymore. Can't you see you're killing yourself? Experience the true story of one man's journey to make it big from the bottom to the top. I'm already a star, Mom, but I'm going to be bigger. Ronnie Little's going in the moon, and next time you see me, I'll be a junior mint in space, twinkling far and wide. Junior mint, the Ronnie Little story. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but that looks pretty good. I just have a hard time understanding Hollywood, you know? I mean, who comes up with this stuff? That's really a true story? Shh. Okay, oh, the next one's about to start. Up, up, ho! Up, 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 whoa! I think they're going to be here a while. Yeah, look at them bastards, so gallant and heady. I can't imagine they'll bring any justice to this town. No, I suppose not, but I guess we'll just deal with them anyways. By decree of Caesar, this town is ours. We will civ- civilize your customs and lands. How dare you! We are free people, not some kind of subjects of your Caesar. Take away this mess! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Get out of here! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a right one here. Let's make sure work of you. Come here. Stop! Let go of me! On the ground, you! <laughs> no! Uh, does anyone else have anything to say? I thought not. Well, we're off, boys. Pigs of Roman Empire, coming summer 2025. That looked all right. A little short. Kind of, kind of strange to have a trailer for a movie that's not like coming out for like 10 years. It's an interesting choice. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, I guess. Hey, look, the next one's about to start. 
Some challenges can seem unbreakable. Doctor, I've never seen bone breakage quite like this before. Can you cure it? My god, there's just no way. Unless... You couldn't possibly. Some lines are meant to be crossed. The only way to get these bones back together are to break them. Coming this summer, one orthopedist is going to break apart what we know about medicine. <laughs> Doctor is cured. And that's when the aliens from planet Metatarsia attacked. Doctor, the military is losing this war. We need you. I swore to only use my powers to heal people. I'm a doctor, not a war hero. Damn it, man. There won't be anyone to heal unless you help. No, they broke through. Doctor, please. Well, you know what they say. If you want to make an omelet, you gotta break a few legs. But that's not all. Swedish massage therapists join the fight to end the tension. Yeah! Ah! Alien King, we fought this war for years, but it ends now. No, my bones! All my bones are broken! But one can only break so far, until the only option left is to break. Kamehameha! The Breakening, coming this summer. Playing now in theaters. The Breakening? The, the Breakening. The Breakening. The breakening. The breakening. The breakening. Breakening. Yeah, I want to see that. Would you see that? Yeah, I just kind of want to see it to see if they say the breakening in it. I could just say it all over, on every day, all over and over again. The, the breakening. breakening. The breakening. Breakening. The breakening. The breakening. Hey, what do you not understand about being in a movie theater? <sighs> Someone needs a chill pill. This summer, rethink reality. Got you. Gary? Doc. Doc, he's waking up. We wake up to a whole new world. Max, where am I? The hospital. You've been out for two years. What? I was... Don't worry. We'll get out of here soon. Where everything you knew was a lie. <sighs> what is that? What? Cars? Yeah, but why are they flying? What? You haven't been gone for that long. Stop playing around. Where everything you see does not line with your memories. Why are you acting so weird? I don't know. Where's the phone? Let me call my parents. What's a phone? What? Do you question everything? What are you doing, Gary? Where am I, Max? Who are you? Are you my real brother? Where is my wife? What are you talking about? Of course I'm your brother. Get away from me. I didn't want to do this. Initiating restart. Or do you accept it? Gary? Doc! Doc, he's waking up! I woke in. Coming soon in theaters near you. I got to see that. What if, like, real life was, well, like, what if there was no real life, you know, and it was all like a simulation or something, like in that movie? Like, at any second, someone could just hit the restart button. Yeah. Um... I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think about that. Like, not at all? You guys don't question your existence? I mean, not really. I mean, maybe not in the way that you're talking about. I mean, if everything was really just a simulation, then wouldn't everything have, like, a predetermined path? <sighs> IDK, man, maybe. But, like, who controls the path? Who determines it? I feel like that's straying a bit away from what I was originally asking. We should talk about it. Yeah, I mean, like, when are we going to find a better time to talk about existentialism than right now? Okay, so, where does life begin? Is that a good question to start with? Yeah, well, how do you mean? Well, like... Can you kids just be quiet? What is wrong with you? Who taught you to act like this? Well, this is awkward. Excuse me, sir? Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You're disturbing the other guests. You're going to kick me out? You should kick these people out while they're making all this noise. Sir, sir, why don't we just take a step outside? We can talk about this, maybe get your refund. You don't need to drag me out. I can walk myself. Jeez. I got issues. Who talks like that in a movie theater? That's just really inconsiderate, you know? Oh, sh come on, guys. The movie's about to start. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Oh, so...
Yeah, we originally uh, we were coming up with ideas for like what we could do radio theater for. We just thought it'd be funny like if we all went to the movies, we saw a bunch of like satirical trailers about like random stuff. Okay. What was the what would you say the most challenging aspect of this whole thing was for you? Uh, the sound effects. I mean, like um, the music, especially too. Like we used a piano, and like so we had to have someone running between sound effects and the piano. Like I'm sure you, you saw as we were like running around, like we were like me and Eric were switching off back and forth, like tripping over each other. So yeah, maybe next time have someone do sound or music. What do you think the most um, interesting sound was for you to make, and how uh, the laser works? sound that was fun. Like we were we were racking our brains trying to find out like how we can make a laser sound. So finally, I just Google your friend. You know, I was like, how do you make laser sounds? And apparently, this is like invented for Star Wars, but you just get like a slinky, extend it really tight, put like a foam cup in the middle of two of the uh, the, the rings, and then. Um, you hit it with like a knife or something, like on one of the things, and kind of rake it a bit, and it makes like this choo 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 noise, and we're like, cool, because now we don't have to do that like that, you know, choo. That just sounds bad. <laughs> um, so that was that was pretty interesting one to make. Okay, um, if you could do this again, what would um, what would you do differently? Like I said, probably definitely get a dedicated person on music, and then um, yeah, maybe maybe just I don't know. Yeah, it does, I don't know, we, we kind of like spread out the acting roles. I think maybe it might have been better if we just had two people like change their voice and then maybe had one person dedicated to Foley because it was a lot, just a lot of, uh, like it's, that was 10 minutes, but in my head it felt like one minute because of like the constant turnaround for everything. Oh no, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, did you have any other ideas for um, what your skit was before this came to fruition? You know, I was really inspired by uh, the show Rick and Morty. I don't know if you've seen it, but they have this one episode where they have a bunch of improvisational sketches done, and they actually did a movie trailer called Two Brothers, which is just insane, random uh, action movie stuff. So I, I was kind of just trying to do something in the vein of that um, with my, the one I writ, wrote for this sketch was uh, The Breakening, <laughs> about a doctor who breaks bones to, to defeat enemies and save the people. Um, yeah, I would like to do, I don't know, some other trailers like that. It would be funny to do like a romance or something too. Yeah, definitely. Would, uh, were all these trailers um, your own ideas, or did you get some uh, them from somewhere else? Um, we the way we we split up the work was that everyone was just going to come up with their own like two minute, uh, two 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 minutes, two and a half minute, um, like sketch for this. So everyone like uh, Eric with a K, he wanted to do like kind of like a rising star, you know true Hollywood story kind of a thing. Okay. John wanted to do kind of like a history timepiece of like the Roman Empire. Eric, uh, Eric, Eric did some crazy stuff. Like he was, he, he wanted to do like a film that about, you know how those films that like try to like make you like eyes wide shut, like well, what's really going on but like a really normal real life situation. Um, so yeah, but the point of all of them was to kind of like make fun of those movies who like take themselves too seriously. Um, but you know, I don't know how effectively he did that. <laughs> Yeah, that one, um, that one with the total reality thing kind of reminded me of Total Recall. I don't know if you've seen that movie or yeah. not, but uh, mm -hmm. it kind of was like eerily reminiscent of that. Mm -hmm. For sure. But overall, this was a really, really great skit, Jack, and uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. And, um, Glad you enjoyed it. No, yeah. Thanks Hope for all of our listeners enjoyed it as well. Yeah, thank you for listening, and thanks for performing, Jack. It was nice meeting you. We're handshaking right now. Uh, you can't see it. We're handshaking. You can see it, but <laughs> it's, it's a good time. Mm -hmm. Since we still have some other dead time, I guess, Jack, you can just tell me. Oh, no, I'm going to forget. Say, now we're going to have radios. And gonna it's just, we're going to just use the two cups. Somebody's going to help me. Go for the Oscar, guys. Mm -hmm. The Oscar. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed Sonic Ramen's piece. Um, up next is Ladios with their radio skit, and I hope you enjoy it. Hello, folks. Welcome to the first ever KDRT Speed Dating Social. Love is in the air. That was beautiful. I need to go wipe my tears, so let's get started. Let's introduce our bachelor, not Michael. Hello, beautiful people. My name is not Michael, and I'm very honored to be KDRT's bachelors with our very first speed dating social. 
Thank you for that simulating introduction. Please show yourself to the love throne while we bring out your first date. Ooh, mittens, come back. Bad kitty, bad kitty. Oh, well, hello there, Mr. Tomcat. Meow. <laughs> okay. What's your name? My real name doesn't matter. You can call me Miss Muffins. Oh, maybe la later you can call me Mrs. Muffins. Um, it's, is that a family name? You know, your piercing eyes remind me of my first cat. His name was Sir Henry McNibble V. How nice. He died in a horrible accident. I don't really want to talk about it. Oh, um, okay. that's okay. We can talk about something else. I can still hear his sweet meow some evenings when I flip through the scrapbook I made in his honor. Meow. Meow. <sighs> Will the owner of the black and white cat please come and get him? Management won't let me keep him. And now, on to our next bachelorette. Why, hello there. You look like a fine young gentleman. My name's Peaches. What's your name, sweetheart? Hi, my name is... So how many kids do you want? I think I'd like about 10, maybe 11 if 10 just doesn't seem like enough. I've always wanted little mini-me's wandering around. My one true dream in life is to make an entire Little League baseball team with all of my kids. <coughs> um, uh, I just love going through baby books and choosing all the darling names I could use. I see hundreds and hundreds of names that I just love. <sighs> it's going to be so hard narrowing it down to just ten. I'm sorry? It's okay, sugar. Ugh, that reminds me. Talking about babies makes me so parched. Don't they have sweet tea in this restaurant? Well, that's fine. Anyways, what do you think I should call my baseball team? Baseball team? You know, the one made up of my unborn children. Our next date is... I'm sorry, I can't read this. It's just a bunch of squares with lines in it. Oh, 你好,我叫小红啊,很高兴认识你。直白的讲哦,我理想中的老公一定只许对我一个人好,要宠我,不能骗我,答应我的每一件事你都要做到,对我讲的每一句话都要是真心,不许骗我,骂我要关心我,别
So, these are my specialized star charts. My psychic made them for me. I had to spend the money I use on my incense for them, but it was like totally worth it. Apparently, this is the month I find my eternal partner. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Eternal what? Eternal partner, silly. So, how often do you shower? I really try to retain the presence of my body's natural odors. It like makes me feel closer to nature. But that's not just because I like sleeping on piles of mud and dead leaves. <laughs> so, tie-dye, like yay or nay. And now, folks, we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone give a cold Alaskan welcome for 2008 Republican vice presidential candidate, Sarah Palin. Whoa there, whoa Maverick. Oh, must have seen a Democrat back there, sheesh. Oh, hi there, I'm Sarah Palin. Is that a moose? No, 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 need for tricky questions, you rascal. You know, I'm just your ever talking mom. No, I wasn't getting special treatment. Do you know the difference between a pit bull and a hockey mom? Um, I don't think so, no. It's the lipstick. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, it's really... You know what else is something? You know, I can see Russia from my backyard. You can see Russia? Exactly. You know, it's like I always said, only dead fish go with the flow. Uh, I don't see how that's relevant. Exactly. You know, these terrorists... And that concludes our first ever... KDRT speed dating social. Not Michael. So, which one of these inciting bachelorettes is your lady of choice? Well, I really felt a connection with Ivanka. Really? No, I gotta get out of here. So, Sarah, I heard you can see Russia from your backyard. I sure can. Come with me. I show you Alaska from my backyard. Well, everyone, that was Lady O's with their fantastic radio performance. I'm here with Ariel. So, how are you doing? How was that? That was a thrill, Landon. That was an absolute thrill. I feel on top of the world. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. So, um, what was your uh, what was your part in this um, this radio show? What did you do? I played Ivanka and Sarah Palin, which were less of roles and more of parts of myself. I just unearthed for this um, skit. Do you really feel a connection with these two people? I do. It's like they're sisters. I never knew. That's amazing. That's crazy. Also, at the very end, I saw that you were talking to yourself as Sarah Palin and Ivanka. You know, it happens more often than you'd think, and to have it, you know, publicized, I think is really good for my mental health and for my personal stability. That's good to hear. So I heard you speak a little bit of Russian earlier. Do you speak Russian, or did you just I learn? I speak a fluent three words in Russian, so my um, expertise goes far and wide. That's really amazing. Like I've taken at least three cores of Russian. I don't think I'd ever be at the level you're at right now. It's hard to, uh, you know, attain a level such as mine. It's cute that you think you can obtain it, but I mean, it's it's good that kids are still dreaming. No, of course. I'm, I, you, you are my inspiration, honestly. Like after seeing this show, like I just want to be you. Like can I just be you, please? I'd like to say I'm surprised, but you know, it's it's something I hear every day. I'm I'm just trying to live a normal life. You know, I'm just like you and everyone else in this room. Okay. Well, thank you, Ariel, for that amazing interview. And thank you all for listening to our radio shows. That was Sonic Ramen first and Lady O second. We're going back to the radio station for some awesome music. Thank you. Have a great day. Hello, listeners. You are listening to Techno Cult Radio 95.7 KDRT. Today we have in store for you a little radio theater, and our first guest is Hot Ice Tea. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Ooh. Ready? Yeah. Hey. Bro. 
The year was 1849. The West was in the peak of the historic gold rush, and the small town known as Davis, California, became swarmed by hopeful miners and their wives. They brought love, passion, faith, future. Well, the truth is that they brought nothing but drama to this once peaceful village. This is actually the dramatic story of the most dramatic drama to ever occur in Northern California. It all started on a Saturday, early in the afternoon, at the Memorial Union Saloon. I tell ya, tons and tons of gold there. Waiting for me, I couldn't believe it. Come on, Briner, that just can't be true. You're just drunk. I tell ya, I found it this morning. I'm drunk because I'm paying for alcohol with gold. And you get drunk as too. Come on, I'll invite you, Cliff. Another one here for my friend. I was about a toast for the richest man in Davis. Me. <coughs> what is this? Tell me, Bryna, what does this mean, huh? Francis, what are you doing here? And what are you yelling so loud for? I knew you were cheating on me. I knew it. But with Morris, your horse? Honey, what are you talking about? Look at this. That's Morris, the horse's horseshoe. I found it underneath your pillow. But, but this... Don't you dare lie to me. I want the divorce, and I want it now. You can't. We'll see, Bryna. We'll see. We are having... A trial. Did somebody say trial? By chance, Fudge the Judge was at the saloon when it happened. So that afternoon, 30 minutes later, the trial began. Order in the court. The trial is beginning now. Mrs. Glances, come here and tell us under oath what happened. All right. I realized it this morning. My husband, Briner, went to work on the mine just like every day. I was making the bed when suddenly I noticed something cold and tough under his pillow. I took it out, and it was a horseshoe. Whoa. Order in the court. Go on, Miss Glances. I just realized that my husband, this miserable drunk man you see at the back, was having an affair with Morse, his horse. Whoa. Order, order in the court. Why do you think so, Miss Glances? Well, I have a lot of arguments. He just spends the whole day out. When he is done at the mines, he comes home, has lunch, and goes out to ride Morris the horse. He even comes late in the night, has dinner, and goes out again. And it's every day like this. He never kissed me, he never does any gesture of affection to me, but he's still happy. At the beginning, I thought he was lying to me when he told me how to refresh his mind riding. I thought he might have had an adventure, but then I found the horseshoe and it makes sense. He has a romance with Morris's horse. Whoa! She's wrong. She's insane. That's not true. Order in the court. Can you prove it? I know somebody who can. Could you call Henrich the priest to the court? I know my husband confessed to him every Sunday. He'll know. Whoa! Oh my God. Please stop this. This woman is completely crazy. Order, order in the court. You are not the judge, Briner the Miner. I call Henrich the priest to the court. Henrich had the pained look on his face, like that of a man who really, really didn't want to be there. Henrich the priest, come here and tell us under oath Briner the Miner's confessions. Foot the judge, I cannot do what you're asking me to. Of course you can. The law is what makes this country and this town a peaceful place. If the law asks you to do it, Henrich the priest, I fear that you then must do it. If you say so, Judge Foote, I will tell everything I know. What? Forgive me, Briner the Miner. Are you afraid of anything that Henrich the priest can tell us today? Of course he is. I am not. It's just that this is, this is shameful. You may be ashamed, Briner the Miner, if what Mrs. Glances said is true. 
Now, go on, Henrich the priest. Okay. It's, it's true that Reiner the Miner comes every Sunday to the church to confess. And it's true he has a romance with Morse, his horse. Liar. There we go. I knew it, you miserable. He's lying. Order. Order in the court. So is it true, then, Henrich the priest? Oh, yes, it is. He came one Sunday, some three months ago, and told me that the smell of Morse the horse was the most appealing smell, and that had, he had started having feelings for her. He described it, it as a sniffing peanut butter and jelly sandwich, his favorite. Oh! You betrayer! Henrich the priest, I trusted you! Forgive me, Brainerd the Miner. Oh, no! Order in the court. Before finishing this trial, we must confirm this story. I call Morse the horse to the court. Fortunately, or unfortunately, Morse the horse was waiting for his owner, or lover, outside. So he came in. Please sit down, Morse the horse. It's going to be fast, I promise. <laughs> Can you confirm, here and now, in front of the Davis citizens, that the romance between you and Briner the Miner actually exists. Hey, yes, it is true. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Morse the Horse. Well, at this point, I think everything is clear. Well, not everything. What, 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 what do you mean, Henrich the Priest? What do you mean, not everything? I have to be fair, Foods the Judge. Marriage is as sacred as fair. Therefore, I have to be fair as well. Briner the Miner is not the only one of this couple that is cheating the other. Excuse me? Can you be more specific? Please, let, let's not waste more time. The truth has been uncovered. My husband is a crummy person. Let Henrich the Priest talk, Mrs. Glances. What I mean is that Mrs. Glances is also cat in a romance. She's having an affair with, with, with Jake. Jake the Snake! Wait, what? What did you just say? A romance with a snake? Please, Henrich the priest, don't make jokes now. I'm totally depressed because my husband is unfaithful to me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Glances, but, but you also come to confess to me, and it must be equitative in the trial. Now, for the judge, if you don't mind, I'm feeling uncomfortable here. If you want to know more about this statement, ask Jake the snake. You can find him in Mrs. Glances' handbag. She told me... She always brings him in whenever she goes, even to church. <gasps> what? Are you serious? My wife has a romance out of our marriage with a snake? Francis Glances, how dare you? Order in the court. Mrs. Glances, is that true? Are you serious, Fudge the Judge? Don't speak to me like that, Mrs. Glances. If it's not true, then you don't mind to open your bag here in front of us, right? Excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom to dry my painful tears. Stay just there where you are, Mrs. Glances. Please, proceed to open your handbag, Mrs. Glances. But... Now. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I'm ashamed. You promised to be faithful to me. Shut up, Briner the Miner. You better not judge your wife. Now, we need evidence. Please, Jake the Snake, could you come up to the court? Of course. What are you doing, Jake? I cannot go with this, hiding our love for more time. Jake the Snake, can you confirm the romance between you and Mrs. Glances? Yes! What? Liar, he's lying. What? I'm not lying. We have a beautiful Skelly love story, of course. Liar, you just got inside my handbag in order to eat me while sleeping. What? Honey, what are you talking about? <laughs> she doesn't even recognize it. Jake the snake? That's pathetic. You set up, stupid human. You'll pay for what you say. Ah! 
You bit me, Jake the Snake. You'll see what happens when you hurt Brino the Miner. This, he has a shotgun. Die, you bastard snake. Ah. No, Jake the Snake, no, you killed him. You killed him. You killed my real love. He deserved it. Order in the court. Order in the... What? I will cook your ugly horse for dinner tonight. Come here, monster horse. Come here and be part of my casserole, you bastard. <laughs> you all crazy. <laughs> Come back here, you coward. Let it go. Let it go. You're crazy. Not as much as you are, Brian of the Miner. I hate you. By the way, Jake's fangs are poisonous. Now go to hell and burn there forever. God save us. This trial is over. This trial is over. Everybody go home and stay there until new order. Love, passion, faith, future, drama. Words that all Davis citizens remember the trial by. Briner the Miner passed away 10 minutes after being bitten by Jack the Snake, who died before the trial got to an end. Nobody saw more the horse anymore. They say that cries of a horse could be heard every Sunday evening in Davis. Hundreds of priests continued working in the town's church, but nobody could ever went to confession from that day on. As for Mrs. Glances and for Judge the Judge, they say they left the town, but nobody knew where they went. It's unbelievable, honey. Just amazing. How can you be so smart? How can you plan everything and be so successful? It wasn't that difficult, honey. I just had to wait until Brian had found the gold. I knew he was going to do it. A lot of people had said that it was likely that there was gold in the mines of Davis. The gold that I wanted to share with you. I knew that the first thing he would do after finding it was celebrate, and where else better than in the saloon, close to his horse. He didn't love me, not at all. Well, I made him not to love me, but instead love more the horse. If a man spends that much time riding a horse on his way to the mines, it's easy to take advantage of it. I think that dabbing more the horse peanut butter and jelly every morning was my most genius idea. That way, he would finally fall in love with her, and that's what I needed as an excuse to have the trial. Yes, it was so funny when you got in and started shouting at him, as if you were really annoyed. But what about the snake? That was risky. Well, I was not going to get that divorce. It's still 1849, you know. So I needed somebody to kill Brian at the minor. But it couldn't be you, of course. Then I thought, what else better than poison this snake? I just had to seduce one and make Brian provoke his anger. So that's what I did with Jake the Snake. I knew that when Henrich the priest told the love story between Brian of the Miner and Morse the Horse, his sense of justice would encourage him to also reveal the one between me and Jake the Snake. And I knew that sooner than later, Brian of the Miner would say something stupid and make Jake get out of rage. The rest of the plan was just sit down, let them kill each other, and of course take all the gold and start our one-way trip all around the United States. We can buy a house or two. We can dress up properly as a new rich couple in New York and try one of those crazy parties. We can eat as much meat as we want. It doesn't have to be horsey. The end. Listeners, is a very special day. Unlike any other, you can feel it in the rustle of the wind, in the moaning of our ever-present trees, and most importantly, in the chatter, the horrifying, scathing roars of the squirrels. But worry not, dear listeners. Today is special for another reason. Today is the day that Davis's first, worst, and only superhero group is formed. The Super Queeros. 
does this guy think he is bashing us like that? The worst heroes? I'll show him what the worst heroes can do. Ah, that's better. Uh, thanks for that, Drowsy. Um, I guess since our announcer is out of commission, I should take over. I mean, I do have the most experience. I'm the only one who's worked with a legitimate superhero. For the last time, Bernie Sanders isn't a real superhero. He's just a cute old man trying to get elected and also supports Israel. Yeah, and save America. On that note, let's get started. I'm the one and only super original magical boy of amazingness and sparkles, or rather, magical food boy. My gender pronouns are they, them, and I like animals, makeup, cute clothes, dragon, MMA, fighting, chemistry, and anything cutesy like that, but my real power is cooking. I can make all sorts of delicious things, and my cakes are only blown up two buildings so far. I'll call that a win. And I'm Caffeine Boy, the speediest pansexual under the sun. My powers allow me to run faster than a falcon, swifter than a cheetah, and quicker than Donald Trump's big mouth. And my PGPs are he, him, his, and Bernie Sanders is, too, a superhero. Well, he is more of a hero than you, Caffeine Boy. At least he lasts longer than a caffeine high. I, um, that's, uh, <laughs> Anyways, I'm Drowsy, and my PGP's preferred gender pronouns are he, him, and his, and I could put people to sleep, much like our fearless leader. Whenever he tries to talk, the only drawback is I fall asleep, too. Luckily, I'm still tough enough to kick anyone's butt in my sleep. And we are the super queeros. Yeah, wait, what? When did we agree on that? I thought you were gonna vote on the two names I put out later. Unlimited Justice Force and Freedom Eagle Strike. Super queeros it is. <laughs> but fine, it is catchy. Yeah, and it's like totally so cute. I bought a cake to commemorate all of us coming together. And after our first mission, I even got some cookies. I can tell we're gonna be the best friends already. Best friends who fight all the dangerous crimes Davis has to offer. Like, wait, what type of crime does Davis have? Um, bike theft? Yeah, bike theft! And don't forget all the hate crimes, theft, sexual assaults on campus, and even the recent stabbing murder in downtown. Y'all, Davis isn't safe or as cute as it could be. Wow, you're totally right. Davis is pretty messed up. Sweet. Well, I've always wanted to have lots of bad guys to beat up. You just brighten my day, magical lad. Hey, does anyone hear that ticking noise? Oh yeah, that's my cake! What? Run! Oh my gosh! Knock. Hello? It's Jerry from the Announcers Guild. I heard y'all were having some trouble with the announcer they sent over, so they sent me to replace him. Oh, oh, they're all just cowering in fear on the floor. My new heroes are so adorable. Anyways, I better skedaddle on over to this here table. It looks like there's a script waiting for me. The show must go on and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, across campus, the true danger lurk for our faded heroes, Bobby Soros, the legendary giant squirrel that had been reportedly terrorizing the school for several months with cries of, Rah, not all men, and Rah, all lives matter. With his newfound ultimate power to control all of the squirrels in Davis, he began his full assault on campus. But our lovely super zeros, um, super queeros, are here to save the day. I thought your cakes explode. Well, they're supposed to. And it didn't. So how about you figure out what's wrong, because otherwise you're basically useless. And who's this old guy? I'm Jerry, your new announcer. And with introductions out of the way, the super queeros were suddenly across campus, ready to fight Bobby Soros. What the? How do we end up on the quad? Haven't either of you read the handbook? The announcer gets to break the fourth wall and do other space timey-wimey stuff to fix plot holes in the story. Oh yeah, makes sense. True, I accept it. Pot, pot holes, holes, pot, pot holes, holes, pot, pot holes. holes, yeah! So anyone have a plan to defeat this like entire army of like rabbit squirrels as you're like basically right about to approach us? Ha! You can't defeat me, squirrels. Attack. Wait, isn't he supposed to ask us who we are first? Yeah, where's the witty banter? Least cute villain ever! 
Unfortunately, dear listeners, our heroes were soon surrounded and looked like they had no way out. But they had a plan, and it was to... Shut up, Jerry. Everyone can hear you. Stop giving away our plan. Oh, but it's so much fun. Let me have some fun. Yeah, Drowsy, just be cool. Unbelievable. These modern heroes are so lame. What did you say your name was again? We are the Super Queeros. <laughs> Gay. Uh, what did you just say to us? That's the det- targetory language, and it's totally not cute. And neither is controlling these poor squirrels against the will. How can you be such a bully? That's totally not cool, bro. You're like totally a, a meanie, and you totes don't deserve my amazing cookies. Oh, yeah, Mr. Big Old Mean Bobby Source. You'll never have the best cookies in the universe. Ha! As if you can deprive me of anything. Unlike you all, I earned my stuff. Unlike students who only get in through affirmative action, you, squirrel, snatch those cookies. Oh no, swiper, no swiping. Oh my gosh, the humanity, the loss. Oh my gosh, my cookies! And the cookies are ticking now. They're mine. Once again, the day was saved by the Super Queeros, Davis's best and only up-and-coming queer superhero team. Good thing you knew that your cookies would explode, right? Um, yeah, I, I sure knew, huh? I'm like the awesomest. Hey, Drowsy? Yeah? We didn't even get to use our superpowers. Uh-huh. Did we even do anything? I beat up an announcer. Cool. <laughs> I still want my cookies back. In a small town in the middle of America, four young adults head to the wilderness to have a coming-of-age camping trip. Little do they know, things are about to get strange as they enter the Midnight Sector. Hey, bros, we're finally here at Camp Red Rum. Righteous! Like, I can't wait to, like, go swimming and just, like, tan, like, all day. Hey, Brad, maybe we can go, like, skinny dipping, like, tonight? Oh, yeah, Buffy. I hope we don't get stabbed at the gluteus maximus in our sleep. Dude, Simon, don't harsh my vibe, man. You're killing my buzz. Oh, my bro. Buffy, behind you. Like, OMG, a bug. Ew, ew, ew. Like, ew. Get it, like, away from me. Buffy, bro, I'll save you. WWE Smackdown. Like my savior, a figure suddenly pops out from behind a tree. You shouldn't have done that. That was its baby. What the? Like, who are you? Like, OMG, he's like, what are you talking about? Let's get out of here. Don't worry, Buffy. I'll protect you from anything. Like, do you think I could smoke that baby roach? Billy Hill disappeared back into the woods as the young adults unpacked the car and set up camp. Simon could tell something was amiss. My fellow companions, my senses are telling me that something is amiss. I do not feel safe at this location after that confrontation with that gentleman. I am not satisfactory. The others shrugged off Simon's comments and they continued setting up camp. Once the camp was set up, they sat around their pathetic little fire and began telling stories. Dudes, we should like totally tell scary stories. Like, yeah! yeah! Totally! I have a super scary story, bros. So this one time, I was totally stoned out of my gourd <laughs> with some friends when this dill hole in the group was being a total lame He was annoying the F out of everyone. Bro, those are like the worst. Like totally, ugh. I know, man, right? <laughs> Whatever, dude. So we tried making the best of it, so we just smoked that dank real fast. Eventually, I got up to pack another bowl, but then there was no more weed. No! I literally thought the world was going to end. We all started freaking out. I looked inside everything, and I mean everything, man. Our bags, our hoods, our socks, coffee cans, my afro, you name it. We looked everywhere. 
Anxiety and paranoia started kicking in at like 4, 20%. That was the scariest moment of my life, man. When suddenly that dill hole pulled out a bag from his jacket and said, I got some weed. We all looked over at him and in a matter of seconds, he became the most righteous dude of the night. Bro was totally rad after all. Bro, those bros are the best. Yeah, man, but like I said, scariest moment ever. Oh, gee, Kyle, like when you said scary stories, I thought you like meant something like actually scary, you know, like like monsters. Buffy, that was terrifying. Similar to what Buffy said, I also thought it was going to be a story that would stimulate my amygdala. Uh, like your, like what? My amygdala. It's where our fear center is located. Bro, Simon, leave school behind. We're gonna have some fun. Woo! Come on, Buff, let's go for a dip. Like, totally, babe. Like, let's go. As Buffy and Bro Brad left to go swimming, Simon and Kyle are the only ones left to tend the fire. As the fire burnt, Kyle seemed to just stare off into the night, whereas Simon looked like he was brainstorming the next scientific discovery. Dude, Simon, aren't you hungry, man? I'm getting major munchies, bro. Uh, not really, but I do possess some potato crisp in my bag if you desire some. Yeah, man! Kyle goes to give Simon a high five, but is left hanging as Simon reaches for the bag of chips. Billy Hill suddenly appears from the shadows. Hey. Yes, Louise. I almost defecated in my breeze. You have really got to stop doing that. Who are you anyway? Billy Hill opens his mouth and says, Billy Hill's my name. Mm-hmm. Billy Hill asks what their names are. What are y'all names? Simon says his name is... Simon. Kyle says his name is... Kyle says his name is... Uh, huh? Never mind. Nice to meet yous. Mm-hmm. Whereabouts is that pretty girl and the guy who killed the baby? Uh, well, they went down to the lake for a swim for a bit. Also, whose baby are you talking about? Huh? They went swimming in the lake? Yes. They shouldn't have done that, Mm mm-hmm. Well, why not? Because that's when it comes out. It comes out at night. Who? This is bad. This is real bad. Who comes out at night? Who are you talking about? (laughs) Suddenly, Buffy disappears from Bro Brad's sight. Buffy, where are you? Bro, stop messing around. Seriously, Buffy, stop messing around. Where are you? To be continued. Right now. Suddenly, Bro Brad comes running from the campsite naked. Uh, Bros, have any of you seen Buffy? She just suddenly disappeared and won't answer my voice. Dude, Brad, where are your pants? I have to find Buffy, bro. I'm gonna go back and take another look, bros. No, Bradley, come back! Bro, Brad doesn't care and keeps running to find Buffy. Kyle, your pants! Hey, Simon, did you notice Bro, Brad wasn't wearing any pants? Will you shut up about the pants? The lack of pants is not a concern of mine. Bro! Simon and Kyle run towards the noise, but were cut off by a half shark and half Kanye West creature with a tail like a scorpion. It was totally gnarly, bros. Roar! Buy my mixtapes! Roar! And that's how everyone died. The end. Just kidding. No one actually died. It turns out that this creature was actually misunderstood, and it had only wanted to invite these teenagers to dinner. You see, with its half shark, half Kanye, and half scorpion body, no one wanted to be its friend. So the creature took Simon and Kyle to its home, where Buffy and Bro Brad were chilling and Netflixing. They all had dinner and became great friends, and they lived happily ever after. The end.